Hi, today I want to show you um, a little device I built. Basically it's a streaming client and the reason why I built it was when I started listening to music, I was back in the 90s, so basically what you had there were CDs and I still have a lot of them. Later on you had MP3s I still had a lot of them on the disk of my computer but somehow I almost never listen to them any longer because it's just so much more convenient to do that with a phone today and with services like Spotify so basically you have all the music you can think of within seconds and the user interface on a, a touchscreen phone is just so much better than anything you would have on a device like this. So, but on the other hand, I mean, sometimes you just want to listen to a radio station in the morning when you have your coffee or so. And also there you have a lot more selection. Nowadays, with internet radio, where you have thousands and thousands of stations instead of the couple of stations you used to have in the, in the FM area. And, I mean, the commercial products you can buy, they either lack things like Apple Airplay or Spotify Connect, or they are very expensive devices. And also things like Sonos, where you basically bundle the, the streaming client with loudspeakers. I also don't like that much, because I still like that from the, let's say, the 90, the traditional thing that you have. A device where you connect connect two nice stereo speakers to and you don't have everything in one device for, for a lot of money so you can get devices so well streaming clients but they tend to be horribly expensive and also they, they are not so user-friendly so if you want to edit the, the radio stations or if you want to set up the device so with, with a remote controller so this is not easy and here we have a Raspberry Pi in where I can SSH into it I can edit playlists and just copy them over it's just so much better and also it is not so expensive so but the biggest problem with that for me was the the case so because I'm not so good at mechanical work and that's why I just decided why not reuse an old hi-fi equipment which is broken so in that case it's a Yamaha stereo tuner and I got that broken on eBay for just a couple of, of euros and I basically took everything out <laughs> the only thing I'm still using is here the, the front pedal so all the buttons the rotary encoder I had to remove the display and replace that with a cheap one so which is connected via SPI to the Raspberry Pi and, and of course using the power button. The only thing mechanically I had to do, I replaced the, the back panel with my own one because the holes just didn't fit. So and now, now let's see how that works. So I turn it on. That is a little bit of drawback today because that thing first needs to boot. So that takes about 10 to 12 seconds so until it's operational so here you see first the logo and then basically it's starting so now it comes up in the mode where i turned it off so in that case it was internet radio so i can control the thing either here you see i can switch the stations or what I also can do I can take a little Apple remote and do the same thing here yeah, you change the volume so switch between the stations so very convenient so what we also have in here is that you have tone control basically you can control the 
the low frequencies, the mids, and the high frequencies. So, and of course the volume. Um, what you also can do, you can switch here with that button, or with that button on the device itself, you can switch other modes. So now this is just internet radio, where I have my favorite stations on these buttons, but you can also have more. And with that menu button here, I can go into AirPlay. Now it's an AirPlay client where you can stream your music from Apple devices. When you press again, now you have Spotify Connect, which is very convenient. So you basically select the things you want to play on your phone and then that thing starts playing that. When you press again, you have the an aux in. Put it's on the back, so you could connect the CD player or whatever. Press again, so you have USB. That is just a USB sound card in that device. I use that to connect the computer. So when I li want to listen to something, whatever on YouTube or so, I have that here. So with a digital connection with no distortion at all. So if I press again, I have again the radio. So, oh yeah, change the station, it still works. Yeah, um, that's basically what that thing does. Sounds pretty well. That's what I want. And well, if you have questions, let me know. And now we want to have a look at the inside of the device. So, and now we have the inside of the device. So maybe we start on this side here with the power supply. And basically we have two transformers. That big transformer here is for the supply of the power amplifier here that is just basically just a rectifier two capacitors and then this goes directly into that module then we have that smaller transformer here that has two times seven volts one of which is used through that rectifier and that capacitor and that step down module and that supplies all the digital components in the device, which are mainly the Raspberry Pi, which is underneath that board here. And also all the other digital components like this um, analog digital converter module here, the switching of the relays and the digital part of that soundboard here. So then the other seven watts AC, they go into that low noise power supply module, which has fast diodes, um, several capacitors and a low drop voltage regulator, which delivers a really good quality for the audio part of that board, which is very important. So these are mainly here that Philips TDA-1543 DAC and the PT-2322 that is a chip for the volume control and the tone control. So, and that goes directly then into the power amplifier which is a TPA-3116 based module. That sounds pretty good for the price you pay for it. So what else do we have? Then we have here, it's just a USB sound card. So here you have the USB connector goes in and here also to this soundboard. And here you have two relays where you can switch between the Raspberry Pi, this module and also an additional aux in on that side. So what did we forget? Okay, here you can 
not see that very good. That is the power control board that is there to start and stop that device in a controlled way. Basically, it has two relays, one switching on and off the Raspberry Pi and the AC going into that low noise power supply and the other relay is switching the 240 volts which go directly to that transformer. So what happens when you turn the device on? There is a little microcontroller on that board and that turns both relays on. So basically the Raspberry Pi puts and everything is turned on. And when you turn it off, you don't want to just hard cut the power to the Raspberry Pi because that might sooner or later lead to corruption of the SD card and then it might not boot anymore. So what happens when you turn that off? Basically the power to the power amplifier gets cut immediately. And then through that wire here, the Raspberry Pi gets a signal on a GPIO there are a little piece of software is running which when that is the state is changed here then the Raspberry Pi is powered down in a controlled way and after 10 seconds basically also the power is cut to that and then the standby consumption is less than 0.1 watt so yeah okay well, what else do we have here this is just the external USB, this is external HDMI, and here we have the, since it's a Raspberry Pi 2, it does not come with integrated Wi-Fi, so we have here a little USB Wi-Fi module with a possibility to connect an external antenna, which we do here, and which is also a good idea because it's a metal case and we need the external antenna. So, uh, what I'm using from the original device is that front panel, basically all the buttons, they do something, that rotary encoder still in use. Um, the only thing I had to take out the display here and replace that with a little TFT display which is connected here through the Raspberry. And you also have behind this um, infrared receiver module where you can control that device with a little Apple remote. Yeah, that's about it. So hope you like the explanation and if you have question, just let me know. Thanks.